Let's find the derivative of the function y equals 4x times e to the x plus 5 raised to the fifth power. So if we're going to calculate the derivative of this thing, we have to, of course, take the derivative of 4x times 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. For which you'll notice there's a couple things going on here, but the first thing to note here is that this is a product of two different functions. We have 4x times 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. And so before we can do anything else, the first thing we have to do here is apply the product rule. For which, as we know about the product rule, we're going to take the derivative of 4x and then times that by 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. And then we add to, to that 4x times the derivative of 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. So we're going to calculate that derivative. The derivative of 4x is simple enough. The derivative with respect to x is just going to be a 4. So we get 4 times 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. Copy down the 4x here. Then the next part is where it might be the trickiest here. You have 3x plus 5 to the fifth power. Which derivative rule are we going to use in this case? It's going to be the chain rule. Because you'll notice you have this inner function, 3x plus 5. Um, we also have this outer function, that is the fifth power. It's a power function there. So by the chain rule, we take the outer derivative first. By the power rule, the outer derivative is going to be 5 times 3x plus 5 to the fourth power. The power goes down by 1. Then we have to take the derivative of the inner function, the derivative of 3x plus 5, which the inner derivative there is going to be a 3. It's perhaps the most common mistake for students uh, to forget that inner derivative. You want to watch out for that thing. So what do we have here? We have 4 times 3x plus 5 to the 5th plus 4x times 5 times 3x plus 5 to the 4th times 3. This is the derivative of the function. Now I should mention, in terms of calculus, we're now done. But oftentimes we have to solve... Uh, for the derivative equal to zero, which really we want it to be factored in that situation. So let's see what would happen if we try to factor this thing. Some things to note is there is a common factor of four, but there's also a common factor of three x plus five. Uh, the first product has one and the second product has one. You cannot take more than the least holder here. That is, since one is the fifth power and one's the fourth power, you can't take away more than what the least product has, which is going to be the fourth power. So we're going to factor out a four. We're going to factor out a 3x plus 5 to the fourth power. 3x plus 5 to the fourth power. What's then left behind? With the first product, we took away the four. Uh, we took away four of the 3x plus 5, so that leaves behind a 3x plus 5. For the second group, let's see, we took away the 4, we left behind an x, we didn't take the 5, but we took away all the 3x plus 5s, we're left behind with a 3. So that then in the brackets is what we need to combine together to try to simplify. Uh, for the first one, we just drop the parentheses, 3x plus 5. For the next one, we're going to end up with a 15x, which is just 5 times 3 right there. And so combining together the, uh, the, the like terms in those brackets, we end up with a 18x plus five, which is our derivative, which we had a derivative earlier, right? I mean, the derivative was calculated here. No more calculus was necessary at that point. But like I said, it's to our benefit to get in the practice of factoring our derivatives. So this is the final form that we wanna record as our final answer.